Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Viewpoint on DBS Television. And of course, it is your favorite debate program brought to you every evening on the weekdays uh, to educate you, inform you, and of course, kind of entertain you with things happening in and around our society. Discussing with us uh, this night or this evening, we are having uh, a teller with us here in the studio. We are talking of uh, Galim uh, Congrat, and of course, Mangave Nashu. Uh, will be accompanying us along. Good evening to you, uh, Conrad, and thank you very much for coming. Good evening, Vanessa, and good evening to all the televiewers of DBS. It's a pleasure for me being with you people tonight. Thank you very much. Manke Venatius, it's a pleasure having you too. It's my pleasure as well, Vanessa. Good evening and good evening to our viewers. Let us take the first part of the show. Once more, welcome back. Let us take our first question tonight. Does Cameroon encourage the consumption of locally made goods? I begin with you, Conrad. Yes or no? No. No, they don't encourage. Mangave given issues? No, Vanessa. No, they do not. Question two. Is government suspension of some higher institute from issuing a certificate logical? Mangave given issues? Not at all. And to you, sir? No. No, it is not. And the uh, question three, of course, the last one. Are weekly cleanup campaigns exercises in the city of Douala effective? I begin with you, Conrad. They are not effective at all. They are not. That is a no manga issues. Share the same opinion, they are not. Share the same opinion and no. All right. Apparently, we are confronted uh, with the no answers tonight. Uh, the debate will be getting tough. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. Coming up is the debate. In our first question, we ask if uh, Cameroon encourages the consumption of uh, locally made goods and a uh, comrade, you think that uh, Cameroon does not encourage the consumption. When we talk yes, of Cameroon, we cannot think of men. If you look today in our country, you see we have a lot of difficulties because our youth, they lack employment. They don't have things to do. But when you go like to the market, to our market today, you will see that, uh, I can say, like clothes we wear, you can see that 80% of the clothes we wear in our, in our country are being imported. You look like the food we eat. You will see, I can say, more than 60% of the food we eat, the rice, the foreign oil are imported. Then, for me, I will put the blame on the government. Why can the government not look away, a way that they can encourage people, encourage farmers, the way that they should cultivate and the government will help, help them to sell their product. So, and this is, these things are affecting our country. Today, our youth, they don't have what to do, they don't have jobs. You will see youth every day, they are fighting, going outside the country, only because they don't have what to do. And if the government can promote, can try to, to try a way that we should consume what we, it what we produce. produce in our country, mm -hmm. you will see that we will have, we will have, our youth will have employment. They will, they will have something to they do. They have something to do. Yeah. All right. So what actually are you proposing the government to do to remedy the situation? If uh, they are good and important, so what should they do to transform? Because in Cameroon, we do produce rice. In Cameroon, well, we have the means. We have enough corn to produce flour. But then that is not being done, as you say. So what could government do to uh, transform this product to locally made goods or maybe don't you think that it is uh, the price in Cameroon that discourages uh, local citizens to consume their own product okay Vanessa if you say we don't produce rice in, rice in Cameroon I I said we're producing large and enormous quantities but, but don't, we don't consume them yeah, we don't consume them because the government does not allow us to consume it How? the government could have not allowed those ones that come from outside to enter the country they could have encouraged the local population to cultivate, to cultivate, and the government should help them to sell it. So you will see that people will consume what we produce. Consume what we produce. Yes. Anyway, thank you very much for your viewpoint. Mangavinashus, you were thinking the same. He just said uh, 
the government is used to importing a lot of goods. He made uh, mention of rice, but looking in particular this issue of rice, we have uh, lid up rice, we have rice uh, from the north, uh, far north region, and then we don't see them in our market, or you even rarely see them. If you see them, the prices are exorbitant. Does that account uh, for the reason why we do not consume our own product? Vanessa, I think that why we don't consume the locally made uh, products from Cameroon, uh, I, I look at it from the point of the mindset of Cameroonians. We believe that if we consume rice that comes in from China, rice that comes in from Thailand, rather than consuming rice from Dop or from uh, the Semri rice in up north, or even from Yaoundé, they produce rice in Yaoundé, then we are not living, you know, the, our standard of life it's is low. lower when we consume ho uh, locally made uh, uh, goods. We have the impression that, you know, if I send, if I, if I wear dresses that come in for, or imported dresses, I'm living a high standard of life. Whereas we forget that we have a tailor with us, he would tell us that they do make the same dresses and if not higher quality but just the mindset that we have that we're importing vanessa it is you know, you know at times it is annoying when we think of cameroon importing toothpick from china simple toothpick whereas we have we grow trees in cameroon we can produce us in cameroon but they import or, i mean right up to toothpick is it that Cameroon is unable to produce? It is because we think that once we, we, we once we use that that comes from abroad, at least our level is uh, elevated. We import bread. We import. I mean, uh, very many yeah, things, things, things that that's... we can produce them, that we do produce them here. The thing is, like he was saying, we need to encourage the locally made rice. It is in the news that uh, just in 2019, Cameroon imported close to 800,000 tons of rice. And if you, you just example, if you go down to the city of Douala, you are looking for dub rice. I'm telling you, I doubt if you can get one ton of dub rice in the city of Douala. Dub that is produced here in Cameroon. We would abandon it and go and import rice that comes right in from China. Mm -hmm. It rice from, 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 from Thailand. Thailand. Whereas, we, and when you look at what we have here in Cameroon, just from the matter of taste, you see that dub rice has a particular taste more than the imported rice. There was one time here where they, 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 it was circulating on social media here that we are consuming artificial rice and at one point we were talking of rice, rice made of rubber. rubber. Mm -hmm. Cameroonians, we, they could suspect us of, of, of any kind because when you eat the imported rice, it has no taste. When you eat rice from Dob in Cameroon, it has a particular natural taste. Natural taste. But then we, we have been made to understand that that is of a low quality and when you eat imported rice that's what makes you there's another one they called uh, 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 perfumed rice these are rice that have been added chemicals have been added yet we consume it with the notion that we are living a standard of life that is a bit better than those who eat the natural rice i think that we need to work the government needs to work on our psychology let us educate our our our, our, our citizens to understand that we can live with what we produce we can consume what we produce i remember the the, the 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 last june session of parliament that was rounding up the president of the national assembly was on this issue of uh, made in cameroon asking cameroonians to consume made in cameroon vanessa will not want to talk of consumption the one that we actually eat but consumption in terms of services as well how many officials in cameroon go for treatment abroad that is homemade consumption. homemade consumption. You see that we don't have doctors? Let us consume the specialists too that we have here. They should be able to treat us. No, but we prefer, we think that once there's somebody, a high profile personality, any health problems, he is flown out of the country. But Mabanga Financials, I would like to ask, you are talking of uh, consuming uh, rice locally made in Cameroon. We don't find them in our market, so how are we going to consume it? Because or if you find it, the prices are too high. Yes, because the production, the production uh, capacity is very low. If we educate, if we sensitize uh, our, our, our citizens to know that we can con consume the locally made, let the government also, like you were saying, encourage the farmers by injecting take the money we use in importation let us inject them into the farmers into the field they would boost production Ndop will not be able to because when you like i was saying go down to the city of dollar you you may not be able 
to have one ton of ndob rice. I don't even know where it is sold. Whereas in every corner, you see rice from Thailand, rice from China, rice from Senegal. Whereas our own, we don't have them. I think we can inject, you can, you can provoke the, 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 the consumption of locally made rice by assisting production mm -hmm. right from the rice farm. Okay. Let us inject it, the money in, with the farmers. We can increase the price of the homemade. You know, if the government buys from them, rather than going, buying from abroad, shipping, and all those logistics that yeah, are involved with it, is, mm -hmm. the price would need, because I would not understand how rice that is produced in Dob is expensive, more expensive than but rice it's, that it's is imported, imported. Mm -hmm. thousands of kilometers away from Cameroon. So, all those things put together will bring down the cost and Cameroonians will, like he was saying, let us stop the importation of rice. If you go to the market and you only see Dob rice, you will be obliged to buy. Let us stop the importation of. Uh, in some countries, they don't import dresses from from China. This uh, thing we normally call okrika. Before you you come back to your point, let me turn now to Conrad. I was about to ask this particular question. Now, don't you think that there is a problem of branding as a tailor, a problem of branding because you complain of the fact that uh, Cameroonians go more for dresses that have been imported. They come uh, locally; they are cheap. I will mm -hmm. put it, they are cheap. But yeah, and uh, they are well branded, though they are cheap and of less quality. They are well branded. So don't you think that uh, Cameroonians themselves, the first of all, have a problem of uh, working on good quality uh, uh, handmade clothes or locally made clothes uh, for their citizens? Yes, Vanessa. The problem is this. What we produce here and the, peop the, uh, the material we got here, the price they sell the materials are already more expensive than the clothes that will come from China. So you, it will be very difficult for, it, for someone here to buy the material, produce the clothes and sell the very price that the Chinese man will sell his own. So the problem we need to do, we need to work together with the government. Let them see how they can limit those Chinese from importing, limit those foreigners from importing and encourage our people to produce more and, so, and, let, and let, let us work together and see how we can put a price that will benefit everybody. We regulate the price that will benefit everybody. Yes. All right, Manga Venatius, you conclude your point. Yes, that's what I was, that, that, that's just exactly what I was saying, that we need to encourage production from the base. We, like he was talking of, of, of the, the fabric, the, the material that they use in producing the, uh, these uh, dresses. We have the, 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 the textile company in Cameroon that produces dresses. Can they not inject funds into the subsidize the cost of production of those material it will become uh, less uh, expensive and then he who is a tailor when he buys it he will be able to produce the the, the, the shirt like the one he's wearing mine is imported his is, is locally made and then the cost will not be the same his will be expensive than, 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 than mine imported thousands of kilometers away but this one he fabricates is here and it is expensive so i think that we can subsidize our 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 Cameroonian citizens we subsidize and then limit importation of foreign goods if we limit it in some countries like i was saying they don't allow uh, uh, foreigners to, to 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 bring in goods into the country that encourage the local uh, 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 population the local local uh, product and then the citizens will be obliged to consume we'll be obliged to consume yes homemade sir. product thank you very much gentlemen for your uh, viewpoint our second question is government's suspension of some higher institute from issuing certificates logical uh, this we are talking in relation of uh, a communique signed on monday by uh, the ministry of higher education banning some institutions like the african regional center for labor administration to issue uh, certificates uh, like uh, the master's one the degree and of course the doctorate but then uh conrad you think that uh, it is not logical for them to ban it yes why so well vanessa when i look into it it is really above me because i don't really know how the how the how our educational system is functioning because it's, it is unacceptable that, that the school function from the beginning to this time and it's at the end of the, at, at the, end of the school year there. that they will just cancel everything. So that one, I don't even, I don't really know what to say. It's above me. It's above you. Yes. All right. So, but uh, the reason they gave is that uh, it, they are not uh, stately recognized as issuing certificates. Is that not enough for them to suspend the issue of the certificates? For sure, it's enough for them. But the question is where we are there from the beginning? What, they, what were they doing? So they could have, they could have stopped that from the beginning. 
So now there's a big problem. So that's why I say that problem, that, that one is above me. Above there's me. a very big problem. All right, Manga Venashus, you are supporting a Conrad's point of view tonight. I said no. You said no. Yes, I said no. It is not logical. Mm -hmm. To a certain extent, anyway, because uh, when you look at it, you would see that the government advances reasons. The government advances reasons why they think that these uh, higher institutes of learning do not have the ability to sign certificates uh, because they don't follow the, 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 the normal procedure in which they need to follow. When you look at most of these schools, they are supposed to be, that's why I said no to, to a certain, certain extent. extent. Yes, most of these schools are supposed to be affiliated to state universities. Mm -hmm. And when you are affiliated to a state university, it would, may, it would mean that it is the state university that is to grant right. or issue certificates uh, you know, you train students and the state issues the, 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 the certificate. The certificate. Mm -hmm. But when I read the communique of the, the Minister of State, Minister of Higher Education, concerning uh, the, these institutions, one is in Bermuda, for example. The school in Bermuda has existed more than 10, more than 15 years that this university has been ex existing. But then we are coming this time to tell us that, to inform us that certificates they have been signing are not authentic. They are not recognized by the government of Cameroon, like uh, Mr. Ngalim was saying, I think that there is something wrong somewhere. Because these schools have been functioning for some time. Mm -hmm. They have been turning out graduates for so many years now. That, uh, that communique from the Minister of Higher Education indicates that all those certificates that have been issued, issued. Mm -hmm. are not and void. They are not recognized. This is what would have been issued from the, uh, the first batch of students that would, have been, uh, that, that would have been graduated from that school. But then, what I said to a certain extent is, unless on the grounds that these universities started functioning normally, where the, 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 the universities under which they are affiliated were issuing certificates, and then along the line, they decided to abandon the contracts on which, on the basis on which they were signed, and now started issuing out certificates. If that is the case, then the government would have been right to suspend the issuing of that certificate on the grounds that they are no, no longer following, following what, what they signed. Mm -hmm. If we take, for example, the Boss Institute in, in Bermuda, if they are now signing certificates, they don't have the ability to. They are supposed to be affiliated to the University of Chang. Because University of Chang is the university that is supposed to sign their certificate. Like probably in all the schools that are all the higher institutions that are school who are affiliated to state universities. That is what obtains and, uh, in Cameroon. Our certificates, we always get them from the Ministry of Higher Education. That is what obtains in Cameroon. And once it is a state university that signs the, 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 the certificate, where that's when you read the, the, the minister's communique, it means it is authentic. Because it is under, under a, a, a state recognized uni under a state university, not state mm -hmm. recognized, mm -hmm. under a state university. Because even all these other uh, 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 higher institutes of learning, they are supposed to go under the state university to make sure that those uh, state university they supervise your training your programs, training programs. To, yes, mm -hmm. so that you you they, 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 you meet up with the standard that is required so that your certificate should be valid legally or recognized but then once they do that it means they maybe the the partnership existing between this higher uh, 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 institutes and the universities concerned no longer exist and if those partnership no longer exist it means that you know that overriding that supervis supervisory role of the university will no longer exist and then the state has the right to doubt the authenticity of the certificates that you are issuing out so i think that's why i said to a lesser extent, to a lesser extent if that is the case yes, okay. the state would be it would be logical doing that but if that is not the case that they have been functioning like that from the beginning then the state would have been you know uh, you, you've been idle for all this while and it will not make sense coming up now and annulling all the certificates that have been issued uh, down the years Vanessa. down the years that has to do like i reminded also when we're taking these questions with the bachelor's master's and doctorate degrees in our third question our weekly cleanup campaigns exercises in the city of Douala effective uh, comrade you think it's not effective mm -hmm. i might be asking on what side is it on the side of uh, the locals is it on the side of uh, the municipal authorities because uh weekly days are being programmed to clean uh, the city for example in Douala 3 it's on thursday and 
when you go out to observe practically nothing activities are not uh, uh, shops are not open activities are not as fervent uh, as it was but then we, we are being told that uh, it is a day for cleanup what do you do makes you think that uh, think that it is not effective yes Vanessa it is not effective at all because when you look like the way the day is being kept in Douala, it's just like a tradition where people just know that every Thursday they will lock their shops and wait maybe from 10 30 to 11 mm -hmm. they will go and open it and start their businesses there are some people who have already organized the Thursday morning as their their sporting day they will just woke up in the morning go to that go to where they do their various sport and later come back and go to their shops at times you go out to the, in the street of Douala you will see shop their shop, shops are being closed why people are inside working just waiting for the time for the time to reach that they should open their shops and start their businesses so for me it is not effective, it is not effective. it's just like a tradition so it's so the blame goes more on the people okay for me the blame i can put the blame we have uh we have this people used to call shape the quartier Quarter 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 mm -hmm. i can first of all put the blame on them because they are the people who are supposed to organize the youth talk to them and make a program on how they are, they are going to work but they are not doing nothing they will always sit there they just wait when there's a little problem they just start running up and down so that's where i put my, my own blame he blames uh, the locals for not uh, respecting uh, that day as this is being used for cleaning man gave an issues i turn to you yes. who should be blamed in I, this situation I, I blame both concerned the authorities and the population i blame them but then what makes this cleanup campaign a weekly cleanup campaign day is uh, not effective is the strategy in which it is being used like he's saying it's just like a, a tradition a, tra a tradition that on, on such days on such days mm -hmm. you just turn around and you know that you go and open at around 12 o'clock 11 30 you go and open nothing has been done the idea was to make sure that we keep our surroundings our environment clean on such days and it was a loadable idea but then the approach in which various councils concerned carry them out is very very poor uh when you say that people should not open up and you expect them to work like like from 7th maybe to 12th it doesn't it doesn't work like that it cannot go it would have been profitable and you know uh, 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 helpful if they could allow people to uh, open up from maybe seven o'clock to nine o'clock and just two hours two hours you work around your working environment mm -hmm. take for example here with us here in tbs they just simply say that at from seven o'clock to nine o'clock function carry on your normal activities from nine o'clock to eleven o'clock everything stops and just clean your surrounding just your surrounding don't go anywhere you will discover that i am cleaning my surrounding you I'm are cleaning, cleaning your surrounding. surrounding he is cleaning his surrounding and in the long run a chain this neighborhood is cleaned when we simply say that from seven o'clock from, from from morning to eleven o'clock nobody does anything it is a day people do their own cleaning cleanup campaign in their houses is a day women do their daily chores before going to their services because they know that every place will be locked and you don't people don't come to work people don't come to work like what happens to their says, uh, some shops are closed but people are in are of course inside. because because you know that if you open you pay fines mm -hmm. so you just remain inside closed outside remain inside while uh, we pretend i blame the people because we are deceiving ourselves we are not cleaning the council we are not cleaning the governor's office the deal's office we are not cleaning we are cleaning our environment our business surrounding and that is why you still keep you keep on seeing gutters are uh, you know are filled up in our cities whereas people are selling right in the front of them bottles. the Thursday was meant to come and excavate the, the sand in those, uh, mm -hmm. uh, those drainages mm -hmm. liberate water to circulate we still have floods in our markets whereas on Thursday people are supposed to come out in the morning clean around you need to go to the market on Thursdays and see the market that people will start selling from 11 o'clock but that it was supposed Supposedly. to be a day to, mm -hmm. so we think that we are doing it to the government no the harm is on 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 us because we don't take care of our immediate don't you think surrounding. that uh, the municipal uh, authorities are also lax in enforcing these measures that is why i said i blame both mm -hmm. the authorities and the population the population think that they are cheating they are cheating on the council the council thinks that 
they, 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 they are carrying out or that they, they are depriving the population because they don't sell in the morning. I remember Vanessa when we carried out an, uh, a report on this issue. Uh, we were trying to find out from uh, uh, some people in a certain neighborhood here in Douala. Mm -hmm. And the question they raised is, it is supposed to be the council to do that because they have a particular tax they okay, pay to the you. council. And the council is supposed to use that tax in cleaning up. But I think that the tax that we pay is not enough. Do it, you say you are cleaning your, local, your, your, your environment. Don't blame the council. Do your own. And then we can stand the chance of blaming the council. Because when you do that, even your locality, even your surrounding in your home, do you pay the tax too for the council? Like he was saying, Thursdays are days that people go out for their fit, uh, keep fit exercises. <laughs> what happens to your surrounding? The surrounding of your own home, of your own quarter. Do you also pay taxes for it? So I think that we blame the population in as much mm -hmm. as we blame our authorities because our authorities. they don't do their work. Vanessa. All right. Thank you for every point. Manga Vinashu, so Conrad, uh, we are about uh, to end uh, today's edition. As a tell all, maybe you could tell us uh, how are your activities and especially during this coronavirus pandemic uh, that we are facing? Yes, Vanessa. Now in Douala, everything is down. Activities are really down. But we are just trying up to to cope to cope with the situation. We are trying to cope with the situation. Yeah. But nevertheless, uh, uh, to respect uh, the COVID nineteen barrier measures as well, you help propagate that uh, in the, your locality and your community, and probably we will. Uh, all of us avoid being contaminated. Thank you very much, Manga Vinashus, for coming to. Hope to see you tomorrow. We will be there, Vanessa. And uh, to you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we hope that we will be back again tomorrow to give you another edition of Viewpoint. Of course, a team mobilized to make this happen, and tomorrow they will still be back, God willing. Do stay tuned for programs continue on DBS television. Bye bye.